What's going on everybody? Today we're going to be painting this medium diver crankbait. But the whole idea of this video is, I don't know if you want to call it a lure painting stencil hack or just a good idea. Uh, I had seen somebody the other day had one of these embroidery hoops and they wrapped their stencil material or their netting to make the scales on the embroidery hoop and then use that to spray on the bait. Now normally what I do if you've watched any of my videos, you've seen this a dozen times, I'll take the stencil material like this, wrap it around the bait, and then take a dozen of these different clamps and clamp them all on there. It can be kind of tedious if you're mass producing or making a whole bunch of baits in the same pattern, you need a ton of clamps, and it takes time, and you risk scratching the bait sometimes with your clamp. So the idea on this is a really simple pattern like we're doing today. You put your netting or your scale material on the embroidery hoop. You just hold it in place and then spray and then you're done. So that's what we're going to be testing out today. And as I just said, the pattern that we're going to be doing is a very simple pattern. One that I would use the scale applying method for. I'll have the bait linked in the description below if you guys want to pick one up for yourselves. The base coat that we're going to be starting with is going to be some opaque white. And I'm going to give the whole bait probably two coats in the white. Next up, we're going to be using the Wicked Colors Opaque Bismuth Yellow. Now, I was really torn between doing this yellow or like the neon yellow, but I think I might add a little bit of green into the bait later. I don't want it to be this vibrant. So for this video, we're going to be doing the, bis the bismuth yellow, uh, but I also think this pattern would look killer with the neon yellow. So if you don't have one or the other, swap them out, and I think you'll still end up with a good looking bait plan is to cover everything that we just sprayed in white and make the whole bait look like a juicy ripe banana. So after much thinking, I decided I'm not going to do any green, but instead I think we're going to take this fluorescent orange. I'm gonna let that orange kind of carry up the side of the gill plate just a hair. I don't want to go too crazy because I don't want it interfering with our other colors or making the bait look too much like a pumpkin. But a little hit of that on the bottom of the bait I think should look really nice. the orange in place. The next color up on our list here is going to be some transparent black. It does not have to be transparent black, it can be opaque. I'm currently out of opaque and have not been to the store nor placed an order online for any more, so transparent black it is. Game plan here is to cover the whole back of the bait and make it a solid black. We'll kind of let the overspray carry onto the side of bait, just onto the side of the bait, just a hair. However, I don't want it to get very dark because one, we're trying to keep the bait bright, and two, we'll be adding like a nice shad dot right in here. I think that is all this bait needs. What I'm gonna do here is go ahead and darken up the very tip of the nose here, right where it meets the bill of the bait. I'm gonna let some of that overspray kind of carry on to where the eye socket is. Okay, with the black still loaded up in the airbrush, we're going to be spraying a nice juicy shad dot on there. I think I figured it out. The videos I hand spray the shad dot where it's fuzzy, people tell me they like the cleaner ones using a stencil. The ones where I use a perfect circle stencil, people say that's not natural enough. So what I did was make a whole bunch of different shad 
dots. I have this as a 10 for 10 pack on my website if you guys want one for yourself. If not, whatever way you make your shad dot normally should work. But we're going to go for, I think this one right here. It's not a perfect shape, but it should still have some nice, really clean lines. I'm just giving you guys trouble. I think uh, both look great. In my opinion, the idea for the stencil is you have a shad dot for every size bait. I think for this bait right here, we're gonna go for the second to the smallest. What I usually do, because I don't care what you say about nature isn't perfect, I like the shad dots to match on both sides of the bait. So I always look for, depending on the, the bait, I'll look for the end of the gill plate right here and where the center line is. And I'll go just up from there. That way I can get them to match on both sides. And this stencil has the big circle with the little one. So I wanna make sure that that matches on the other side of the bait as well. Just to sell to the fishermen, obviously the bass don't care, but I'm gonna find the edge of the gill plate there, find that center line and go just up from there. And there we have a nice, super clean, abnormally shaped shad dot. I'm gonna repeat the same thing on the other side. And beautifully matching, perfectly placed, gonna kill every bass it sees, well not kill them, but catch every bass it sees, shad dot. That right there made the bait. We could end the video here. Okay, I'm gonna clean out the airbrush and we'll move on to getting our stencil set up. Okay, I got some of that tool cut off or the netting pattern. Try to zoom in a little bit here. I probably should have got a darker color fabric so you guys could see it better, but it's a really fine mesh netting, which is hard to get it to be clamped onto the back of the bait nicely. So I'm hoping this will work because that would make my life a lot easier and should produce some good looking baits. I had to have my wife explain to me how these things worked so I didn't look like a fool on camera. I got an absurdly long piece of tool here, so I'm going to trim it down a little bit wider than our circle here. Set the rest of that off to the side. Okay, so what we should have to do here is lay our tool or the netting top of the bait. I think I'm gonna use a couple larger paint cans, paint bottles to kind of help hold it in place here a little bit. Cause I'm new at this, so I don't know if I'm doing this right or if there's a better way to do this. But I'm gonna go ahead and set our smaller ring on top there. I'll pull it tight. Okay. That looks pretty good. And I'm just gonna pull it tight all along the edge. Go ahead and start tightening the hoop just a little bit there. I think I got the material tight enough. I still want there to be a little bit of a give, so whenever we push it on the bait, it'll shape to the bait, rather than just being super taut. But I am going to crank this down, I think as tight as I can go with my fingers. I think any tighter would be unnecessary. And then, so this don't get in the way, I'm gonna trim off the extra leaving just a little bit more to tighten it if we need to, but I have three yards of it, so if I have to redo this later, uh, I've got plenty of material. They also sell smaller hoops. I went with the six inch one, so I can try on another bait, and you guys let me know if you want to see this video sooner rather than later, but where we could try to push it on the whole side of the bait. For this one, we're just going to be doing it on the back to prove that it works, hopefully which I have high hopes. I think we'll just lay it just like that. 
I think because of the curvature of the bait, I'm going to start on the back and then kind of rotate it forward as I'm spraying. Yeah, I think that'll be fine. So hopefully you guys can see that. Get it centered here a little bit more. So you can see how it's pushing on the front and as I rock it towards the back, it, the fabric gets tight along the back of the bait. So, I don't know, I guess we will find out together. The color I have chosen to spray is going to be this pearlized blue, which this color is an awesome color. If you guys don't have this one, this has been one of my favorites for a long time. Super vibrant and always looks stellar on top of black. This is the part in the videos where I always get slightly nervous because I kind of only got one shot at this. I'm gonna try to get it to where I don't have to do anything besides rock it. Start up here on the front. Okay, moment of truth. I think this guy right here, the little clamp from my stand got in the way a little bit, but did it work? Oh, I think it worked great. Really hard to see at the moment, but once the clear coat goes on, it'll help separate that blue from the black. So I think it's a win. I will get some really nice close-up shots of that uh, once the clear coat goes on. But I think uh, I think it worked. I probably should have just done it over top of a white bait so you guys could see the results immediately. But you'll just have to wait, I guess, until the clear coat goes on. Uh, another idea I had was if we were doing the side of a bait, we could put tape on here and give us a nice real thin line if we're doing like a sexy shad pattern or something like that. So I got a couple more ideas that we could do with these hoops. So you guys comment and let me know if you want to see those sooner rather than later. For this bait, all that's left to do is pick out some eyes and the eyes for this one are going to be these orange and black, which matches our paint scheme perfectly. I do a little dab of glue. And there we have it. One super simple, but very effective paint pattern utilizing the hoop for our scale texture. So if that works, I'm gonna end up with a whole bunch of hoops and a whole bunch of scale patterns. So if you guys want the Shad Dot Stencil Kit, I'll have that linked below. The hoop and the netting, I picked both those up from Walmart. I'm gonna get some clear coat put on this bad boy and then we will come back and take a look at what it looks like all finished up.